it's a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan. If you're in the business of making money, it would behoove you to be a safe and inclusive space. Whether you agree with what someone is saying has nothing to do with his right to say it. He's a man, such a man, such a man, he's a real, a real man's man. What's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Alright, someone gotta put me on game real quick, man, because I'm a little bit too old, I guess, nowadays to understand today's music. And I guess this wouldn't necessarily be considered today's, because I figured this song or music came out like five, maybe even six years ago. Tell me why I was dropping my sister off somewhere. I ain't gonna say the area. But when I was dropping her off, she decided to turn on my radio and put some music on, right? And she's listening to this dude. And I'm like, who is this guy? Mind you, this is probably like maybe three or four days ago. And she's like, I'm like, who's this guy? And she's like, oh, this is King Vaughn. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, King Vaughn. I'm like, what the fuck is a King Vaughn? She's like, you don't know who King Vaughn is? You don't know who little Dirk is? Huh? I'm like, no, nah, I don't know. She's like, man, you shot out. I'm like, okay. So I was curious. It stayed on my mind. I looked up the King Vaughn guy, right? And apparently I didn't find his music first. I found a three hour documentary telling me why he's rap's first ever serial killer and i watched the entire documentary and that shit was interesting as fuck now it's a lot better than his fucking music which is goddamn terrible i don't i seriously i don't get the fucking drill music nowadays i mean it's the same fucking music all the time gonna pull up my block gonna get me my mean work gonna get me my dog's at i don't want my dog's at i don't want my name i don't want my name it's it's a it's like you guys sound like you're on fucking like helium like i don't know like stop od no helium that's sh that's just not healthy for you but yeah regardless though um i found out that the king von guy is a fucking massive massive like he's not even a like rapper rapper this dude's just a fucking murderer turn rapper which is great and then i look at the rest of the chicago scene and they started bringing up multiple people within the scene who raps and like literally almost everybody that they say i heard the guy fbg duck or whatever his name is heard he died too literally everybody they brought up in the chicago scene besides the dirt guy they're all fucking dead that is disturbing i don't even understand what the fuck are you guys in chicago even fighting over like i get it down here we got the whole little gang shit also my brother just did 10 and he got out i get it i understand but down here it's like a purpose like i still don't agree with it but people over here they fight for spots so they can sell. You feel me? Like over there in like Chicago, or as they call it, Chirac, because yeah, y'all motherfuckers are like y'all a third world country. Y'all ain't even fighting over shit. 62 block, 63rd block, 64th block. This is my territory. I pew pew my homies. I do my thingy thing. Isn't that what King Von said? I do my thingy thing. Like, what the fuck? Y'all not even fighting over turf to sell drugs or anything. Y'all niggas just killing each other for the sake of killing each other. Like, it's a sport or something, bro. Yo, y'all, y'all crazy, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all crazy. But seriously, that documentary was good as fuck. Y'all get the opportunity. Go check it out. I forgot the guy's name. Something Lore, Ross, something, whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'll link it in the description. Nah, fuck that shit. No, nah, look it up though, man. It's like King Von Rose first serial killer. The documentary is a hell of a lot more interesting than this fucking music. Sorry about that, guys. I know, I know. I know, I, I like, I'm sorry. I like real rap music, okay? I like my rap music to have lyrics that actually, you know, paint out a vivid picture of not just murking people for the sake of murking people. And then again, I do listen to Tupac. Okay, let's see. Uh, Will Lospray versus Kasuya Ryubadibita Shibata. Uh, the Mogul Embassy, uh, Swerve Strickland versus Kenosuke Takeshita, uh, the Young Bugs versus Private Party, a Fatal 4 and Number Contender match where Chris Statlander, Sky Blue, and Jay Willow Nightingale. The Best Friends take on, uh, the Undisputed Kingdom, which is stupid because it's a tournament to see who can be crowned the new tag team champions, even though the Undisputed Kingdom are the ROH tag team champions. 
So essentially you're telling me that their belts are meaningless compared to the other belts. Because, I mean, would you ever have your AEW Tag Team Champions go after the vacant ROH Champions? No? Oh, okay. Just curious. I was just wondering. All right, with that being said, though, let's get directly into the video. Yo, free my dog Vaughn. Oh, wait, sorry. All right, let's go. I don't want to get... I don't want to get smoked by his by his spirit op. I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to get smoked by his spirit. I don't know. Representing that O block fucking idiots. I swear to God. Okay, so I finally got my taste of a live Will Ospreay match. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's kind of go in chronological order. Back into the left. Back into the left. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Botchamania ain't nowhere near to be found on this motherfucking channel. We do memes here, bitch. We do memes. I think he does too, but I do him better. Okay, so we had uh, what's those losers name again? Uh, the Young Bucks. They were backstage and they were talking. They were being all nerdy and shit, you know. <laughs> Renee, we're tough guys. <laughs> you will conduct this Ender Shrew the way we want you to conduct it, okay? <laughs> and then you have the other, what's his name, Matt Buck. Oh, don't worry, Renee. I'm the sweet guy. I'm a nice guy. You see the gimmick that we're trying to portray right now? Help us get it over by not being a stoic son of a... Uh, seriously though, what is with Renee Patty Cake, bro? She's starting to revert back to her boss status like the rest of her compadres in WWE. She's supposed to be the one married to Moxley, right? Meaning she could pull some strings. Meaning that, you know, she could be a little bit more eccentric, a little bit more goofy, a little bit more of the willy-nilly, some of the loosey-goosey, if you will. She's just standing there. She does that all the time. I feel like she was way more energetic in WWE. Maybe she hates her job. Maybe she hates her life. I mean, she is married to John Moxley. I wouldn't blame her. Uh, what else happened going back into the left again uh brian Danielson had a nice video package i very much enjoyed it very sports oriented if you will right you have them highlighting all this stuff back in roh and like the early 2000s his time in new japan pro wrestling his time in wwe <laughs> that's a thigh slapper no, but seriously, though, I mean, like, how are you going to highlight all this stuff and just miss, like, a huge fucking decade, like, right out of there? Like, a huge, I mean, like, 2010 is when he came to WWE, right? I mean, that entire fucking chunk is just removed directly out of his career. You might as well just say what CM Punk said when he came back, his old dusty ass, and he was like, I left Pro Wesley in 20, oh, fuck, I'm retarded, 2005, and I'm now back in 2021. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you, you left, so you left pro wrestling, yeah, you, 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 you sure left pro wrestling, CM Punk, you went to go be an activist for your wife, or dare I say a husband, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out which one's the husband and the wife, you want to start throwing jazz at Seth Rollins, okay, Mr. Projection, okay, Mr. Rock Stone at Glass, you son of a bitch, <sighs> sorry, but no, it was a great video package, I dug it, it was the best video package in the history of video packages, if I can take that video package and harness the energy, the energy from that video package, I swear to God, I could probably build like a, like an actual AI robot and I could turn him into my girlfriend, and you know, I could probably, you know, not be a virgin for the first time, oh wait, no, I'm describing your life, and then we had this match with Kasushika, oh wait, I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, uh Shinsuke, no, no, fuck, mm -mm. Fuck, uh, uh, Hideo Atom no, god damn it, the Japanese guy, I can't remember his name, um, I don't know, Mr. Squinty Eyes, he went up against Will Ospreay, and it was the kind of match that you expected to see, because it's AEW, and it's the kind of match you expect to see, out of AEW, I'm sorry bro, look, I can't, I can't, get myself into an AEW match in 2024 and the way you guys can get yourselves into it we've seen it all they've done it all that's the problem with professional wrestling when you rely on the end rank stuff way too much you kind of do it all without even recognizing that you're kind of doing it all and I just wasn't really invested into any of it. Not to mention, I think I've said this before in the past, but let me just reiterate myself for you dumb motherfuckers in the audience who dare subscribe to my channel later when you should have subscribed earlier. And by earlier, I mean when I first came back for the first time, you motherfucker. No, I love you guys. Seriously, you're my you're my best friends forever. I said back in the day, said back in like 2000 and what, 21, maybe 2020. I don't know. When did the COVID thing happen? I don't know. When did Joe Biden like, like released all the viruses on us in order to, well, I'm tripping right now. No, I mean, I'm not tripping. I love Joe Biden. He's my favorite grandpa. But I said back in the days, oh, you know, um, 
New Japan Pro Wrestling, all they do is just like they hit you in the face for real and then knock your fucking tooth out and then get back up like nothing happened and go, Grr! Is that all you got? Is that all you got? This is my fighting spirit. I'm doing my fighting spirit. And it's like, and that's all you got. And I don't really want to give a shit. I hate New Japan Pro Wrestling as far as his fighting style is concerned. I feel like I liked it when I was younger because I did like it when I was younger. But like the older you get and the more you start watching professional wrestling and you already know that it's super duper fake and it's tiresome and it's boring as shit sometimes. It's like, I don't know, you get agitated really quickly. And I felt like in the late 2000s, I started to get pretty agitated by it. I mean, I still watched it. But then once you got around the early 2010s, I was like, fuck this shit and fuck this program and then fuck you, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I don't want to watch any more of your stupid ass slant eye stuff, bro. That shit's dumb. I hate it. It's goofy, goofy ass niggas. No, no, but seriously though, bro. Like, um, I didn't like this match because I didn't care for this match. I'm pretty sure it was a good match. And maybe I should have liked it a lot more, but I'm not you. And I do have a life. And I do like to use my left hand sometimes when my, when my right hand gets tired. But we do have a match that might be good. You know, we do have uh, Private Party and the Young Bucks. Oh, so it's going to be one of those kind of shows, huh? It's going to be one of those shows, huh? No promos, huh? We're not going to get any good promos. We're not going to get any stories. Just exhibition matches happen throughout the night okay that's okay i'm okay with that <sighs> okay with that being said let's get back to this show i mean it's really a video game but that's okay y'all so let's get back to it ah oh, boy oh boy i gotta learn how to stop arguing with you folks in the comment section you never make any actual fucking points okay Folks, look, I ain't no fucking Einstein, okay? I'm not a person who can go around. I can tell you two plus two equals four all the goddamn time. Okay, sometimes we're going to forget because I'm a dumbass, literally and figuratively, right? That's how that works. See, I can't even get my words right. I can't even get my terminologies right. But when I get into debates, okay, when I talk to people, one thing that I'm pretty good at is being really, really careful with my words. I'm gen, not all the time, not all the time, but generally speaking, 90% of the time, I'm very, very, very careful with how I talk. I may stutter, I may stammer, I may do some other weird bullshit type of talking rhetoric bullshit thing, like I'm doing right now, for example. But I tend to try to be extra careful with how I talk as far as coming across and putting across my perspective. If you are going to debate me, do not tell me that I said something or you're taking an L because of this last argument. You have to elaborate on that. And they never do. You guys never fucking do. Whenever you say that I took an L in another debate or whatever, you never paint out the debate. Like, me personally, if I destroyed you in the argument, I'm going to point out that argument. I'm, I'm very concise. Whenever I talk to you guys, I point out the thing that I want to get across. If I don't, if I don't have a thing that I can't get across and it's strictly just some anecdotal opinion, I just keep it to myself. I have no reason to want to espouse upon it because it's stupid to talk about that talking point that you guys, for an example, I'll give an example. I'm talking to this guy right now, right? And he's about the whole Abaddon shit. You know the post I posted, what was it, yesterday or two days ago? It was something that I posted about Abaddon and the whole fucking non-binary shit, right? And he's essentially saying, well, you don't understand anything because you're stupid because you don't understand that when you're a transgender, that's the only way you can claim to not be female or male. And I'm like, yeah, bro, but she said that she's non-binary, meaning that, you know, you have this whole little middle portion where you can kind of pick whatever fucking gender or whatever represent representative fucking title you want to use upon yourself in order to put across your own specific gender. So, you know, that argument right there is just like me saying it's a, it's a self-contradiction. You know, like you, you say that you want to wrestle in the women's division, yet at the same time, you're saying that you're not a female and you don't subscribe to the notion of being a female. So that just kind of doesn't make any sense. Well, don't you fucking know that transgender means this? And it's like... I can't, I, I don't know how to argue when you, when you're that fucking stupid and then you just repeat the same argument again and then you go, ha ha, you took the L in the last conversation and it's like, I don't even remember what conversation, can you bring it up? Like, what are you talking about? And then you get to the last portion of the fucking conversation. It's like, you know, like, I bet if they wrestle for WWE and it's like, ah, there it goes. Okay, there it goes. I get it. All right. All right, the whole conflation and you pretend that this argument actually is about this, but in reality, you have a problem with this entirely separate situation. Folks, be a man, okay? I know I don't have that many women in the audience, so strictly talk about the men. 
be a man. You have a fucking argument, bring it up and fucking get to the fucking point and say your argument and say your piece. If it's strictly just an opinion and you're upset about that opinion, I mean, you can talk about it if you want to, but if you're expecting to talk to me, don't fucking put yourself into a trap where you're going to talk about your opinion and state it as if it's fat. Because, I mean, it's not even a destroying thing. You're just setting yourself up for failure. That's why I say every people say, I hear people all the time in the, in the other comments, they ask me for advice or, oh, Devontae, someone just con commented underneath my thread on this. What can I say back? I I'm not no fucking debate king or anything like that. It's just that people are fucking stupid. Like, it's that's just the whole thing. People are really fucking dumb. It's not a debate bro tactic or anything like that. It's, it's just they're fucking dumb. And they don't listen to the entire video. They don't read the whole post. They don't know what the other person legitimately was saying. And they just set themselves up to look like complete and utter fucking like losers. It, it, it's, just, it's just so fucking mind numbing. Like if you just pay attention and you actually read the article, if you actually listen to the video, if you actually hear the person's other talking point, if you actually listen again, I fall in those traps sometimes too when I don't pay attention and I'll be the first person to apologize and I won't even go further within the conversation. I've heard of people's comments. I've pinned people's comments. <sighs> Again, this is an, this is like an extension of the whole wrestling fans are stupid video I did a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, come on, just come on, come on, God damn it! <sighs> All right, ran over. And uh, so there's not really much to talk about. The whole Young Buck stuff was just fucking stupid. Again, it's just another AEW match. <laughs> really, that that's it. There's no story to it. There's nothing really to talk about. It's just another AEW match. I wish we can guess, because the, the thing is, they're having some pretty strong promos and vignettes throughout the night also. They showed another vignette that I guess I can't even remember who the fuck was featured. So I think it was the Young Bucks, actually. No, I think it was the Young Bucks and Private Party, actually. I don't even think that was a vignette. I think that was just actually just um, going back to 2019. Showing, they're doing a lot of good things as far as their production is considered, but I really, really wish we had some type of story plot, like a plot that actually started off the night and then we can go throughout the night. And, and again, this is just a wrestling part problem overall again wwe they do it sometimes with the whole okay we have a plot device to plug throughout the night but i feel like they don't do it enough and in aew they don't do it at all it's just throw out random match here throw out window match there throw out random match here they don't have a theme at all when talking about any of these shows that's why they're so fucking boring too like like when i come into a show bro i kind of want to be set up for what the fuck is going to happen throughout the night right like when you watch any other real show whenever you watch like for an example like um i thought a show um like keenan and kill for an example right or Ed and eddie or powerpuff girls or the rugrats or pepper in or recess or fucking courage of cowrie dog or cow and chicken you know it wasn't just the fact that they were cartoon shows that caught a kid's attention. It was also because you did have something unique and a premise that you started off with that you got their attention because that's what they wanted to see to begin with. And you follow through it throughout the rest of the show or throughout the rest of the episode. And then you got to the conclusion, right? And you doing stuff like that over and over and over again, that's going to make your show known for doing stuff like that over and over and over again, right? That's the whole concept of actually drawing people into your shows. I see so many wrestling fans all the time talk about, oh, what can AEW do in order to boost their ratings? Because, you know, you bring in all these superstars from WWE and you might get a boost. And even then, even then, if Sasha Banks is any representation of that example right there, like that isn't even working anymore. There's only so much you can do as far as bringing in wrestlers from different companies who, by the way, aren't even really that over in their own company. If they were, then WWE wouldn't have let them go so fucking easy. And they come over to your company and yeah, great. You get a nice little ratings boost that week. But then what happens afterwards, bro? Like take this fatal forward match. And I'm not even going to review right now because it sucks because it's women and it's Sasha Banks. And I don't give a shit. You haven't given me a reason to give a shit. If you're going to do Sasha Banks and fucking Willow Nightingale, then get directly into it. Like, can we get something spicy? Maybe we can get a promo here. Maybe we can get an angle here. Something along the lines of building up to what Willow and Sasha can inevitably do. Maybe a dynasty. 
but you just throw out a random fiddle four-way match and you have three of the competitors who do have somewhat of a history with Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale and Sky Blue, but then you have fucking NJ right here. And before you say, well, Devonta, you should watch Rampage or Collision if there's some type of consistency going on with that story right there, then bring it on to Dynamite and fucking reiterate that fucking, re not even reiterate, re remind us no, not even remind i can't even say that because remind would mean that we have actually seen it to begin with no, explain to us what's going on explain to us the narrative whenever you watch dragon ball z it was always a previously on dragon it's a fucking meme previously on dragon ball z and they recap everything of what happened throughout the last episode to catch you up of what the fuck you're about to watch right now so you're not left out of the loop if you did happen to miss the other episode it's not really that hard at all, but it's like, and again, this is not just strictly an AEW problem. This is a wrestling problem overall. Now, granted, like I said, WWE does it for time and time, but like, it'd be really, really nice if there was like, if not even a full thing, just a quick little synopsis of what the fuck is going on at the moment. And can we have that plug throughout the night? I don't want to watch this match because that's what's going to actually bring in fans story i say that all the time but i never really got into the weeds of actually explaining the premise of a story and why they want to see the story and how that's actually going to engage with your audience and how that's going to be the catalyst of what's going to bring in more fans overall yeah the cool aesthetic could be a thing like the attitude era as far as what it was known for but rocking you know austin pouring concrete cement inside of a limo or inside Vince's sports vehicles, or him riding the Zamboni and attacking them. None of that shit means anything at all without Vince screwing over Austin to give him a reason to want to do any of that stuff. You're just throwing out Fatal 4 matches for the sake of having Fatal 4 matches. You're throwing out tag team matches for the sake of having tag team matches. You're throwing out Will Ospreay for the sake of throwing out Will Ospreay. When in reality, I mean... No one is going to remember any of this shit. And they just kind of just string in together. And it's AEW. So they do the same type of matches over and over and over again. And it just is. It's, it's, it's fucking exhibition, bro. I don't know, man. People say all the time that I'd be really, really harsh on AEW. Am I really being harsh on AEW right now? Or am I just speaking objective truth, huh? Like, goddamn it. Like, it's my opinion. But I'm telling you why I'm espousing on my opinion. I don't think I'm saying anything wrong. But of course. Hey, it is what it is, man. We still got more to talk about within this show. Like I said, not talking about the Fiddle 4 year women's match because I just really don't give a fuck. But again, this whole thing right here feels like it's a complete extension of the Why Wrestling Fans are Stupid video I did a couple of weeks ago. You should go check that video out, by the way, if you want an overlapping, a complete encapsulated opinion to kind of tie in with this also. Because again, it feels like it's an extension of it. But with that being said, let's continue on with the show. Okay, so I have every right to believe that Kanosuke and um, Swerve are going to have a kick-ass match because it's Swerve Strickland and it's Goku, and that should be pretty damn awesome because I like manga and I like animes and I like black people. Yo, but before we talk about that, again, just a little small rant because it's during the commercial break and we're about to get into the mini event soon. I, I don't... I don't know what else to say because I'm just going to keep reiterating myself over and over and over again, bruh. Like, I don't know how anyone can, like, legitimately sit through these shows. This shit is torture. <laughs> this shit is out. This is outright fucking torture. Like, there's no way. You got to be almost like a sadist, right? No? Am I tripping? To sit back and then watch the same thing over and over and over and over again in different iterations. There's no way that if you were to sit someone in front of, like, AEW Dynamite in a torture chamber and you play this shit on loop every match just literally take every match in the last five years and just put it on straight for someone for someone to watch strapped down into a chair that they wouldn't go fucking mad seeing the same thing over and over again very akin to being locked in a white room with white lights and white rice with white clothes on and you're wrapped up in a white fucking straight jacket right it would be torture optically speaking hearing all that stuff that's what they do in the fbi in order to fucking into or the cia i don't know whichever fucking crazy ass association that's involved with the deep state whichever one of those guys that's what they do to torture you is to actually it's like i don't know if it's like um i think it has something to do with light deprivation or sound deprivation something along the lines of that but it makes you go mad and i don't see how that cannot be you know that, that, that you can't give that same thing to AEW, bruh. This shit is torture. 
Like, how do you watch the same thing over and over again? Bro, you had this tag team match with Orange Cassidy and Tremperetta going up against um, the ROH tag team champions. And never mind the fact that the ROH tag team champions lost, which, I mean, great way of telling, you know, the, your audience that, like, your champions are so shit in ROH, they can't even beat the people who are most likely going to lose against the people who are going to win those tag team belts with the Young Bucks. That's a great way to tell your fans, essentially, that the ROH Tag Team Champions are a bunch of fucking nobodies. Within a group who are a bunch of fucking nobodies. Because no one gives a shit about the United Kingdom. It feels like all the shit that you were doing, building up into this nonsense, feels like it was just done for nothing. Everybody involved in it looks like a complete fucking dork. An idiot. Where's the Wardlow? You're showing video packages throughout the night. I'll be at very good production. I'll give you that. But not one production on Warlow at the very least. Not even one. So we're just not even going to pretend that Warlow was even the fucking thing. Oh, wait, Devontae, didn't you see him come out tonight? No, I didn't. Maybe because I wasn't paying attention. But do I give a shit? Do I really give a shit? Do you guys give a shit? I don't give a shit. I honestly really, really don't give a shit. <sighs> but I guess Tony has this rule where it's like, as long as you're seen on television, doesn't matter what you're doing, as long as you're seen, then that's good enough for everybody. And it's like, oh, boy, okay, cool, whatever, bro. You keep having this smart-ass mentality, and we'll see where that takes you in the next couple of years. I didn't give a shit about this tag team championship tournament match. I don't give a shit about all these matches on this show. It's just match at the 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 match. All this shit building up is monotonous as fuck. There's no break in between. And, of course, you'll get the AEW faithful to come in here and tell me to just like the taste of shit we'll put whipped cream on this time Devonte. can you at least try it this time with the motherfucking whipped cream no i don't want to eat your shit with whipped cream on the top of it okay it's gross it's disgusting and no matter what you do to wrap it up to tell me that hey Devonte is actually a nice chocolate swirl treat i know what it is i can smell it it's shit bullshit on top of that if you want to eat the bullshit, then by all rights, go ahead and eat the bullshit. But don't try to fucking put any type of toppings on it and tell me that it's not bullshit. Put it into the, the shape of a swirl and then try to hand it to me and tell me, there you go, Devontae, eat this shit. It's called ice cream. No, I'm not going to do that. You can do that, but I'm not going to do that. But with that being said, this doesn't even feel like a fucking review tonight. This feels more like a, just a clap in the cheeks of AEW. So that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm just burying the entire fucking show just as a concept as a whole because there's nothing to talk about with most of these matches. They're just straightforward, boring-ass matches. There's no story in between for the rest of them. Don't listen to the AEW fanboys telling you the, the this lame nonsense of, whoa, don't you understand, Devante, that Will Ospreay wants to go up against Brian Danielson and Brian Danielson beat the, the fucking... Vegeta over here and fucking Will Ospreay he just beat Vegeta also and therefore he's one upping that's the story that's not I want angles bro I want reason do you not know what the fucking story is bro I'm, I hate when they come out with these lame ass stupid ass excuses to tell me what the fuck a story is that is the bare minimum that's I said it earlier that's that is the, that is the synopsis of the story I want it to be deep I want to understand what the fuck I'm sinking my teeth into this this nonsense of just trying to bring up the bare minimum of what constitutes a story from your purview does not mean that I have to follow suit and pretend that you saying the bare minimum of what actually tells you the construct of the story is the story in itself. No sorry, Bob, am I going to fucking do that? Like I, It's like playing the video game and all you get in the video game in itself is click on a select screen. Click, the, click a, a player. Click a character. Go in there and have a fight. And that's it. No story mode. No creative mode. No other little game modes that you can do in order to, you know, have somewhat of a sandbox experience. Click a character. Fight. And then when you bring up the fact that, hey, man, this game, this isn't even a fucking game for real, for real. They'll say something like, well, Devontae, did you pick up a controller and did you play it? Because that means it's a video game. There's no winning with these fucking people. I'm telling you, there's no winning with these fucking people. But with that being said, let's get into the mini event. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a kick-ass match, but I would like to see something like, I don't know, the world champion somehow being involved, considering it is the main event. Or am I just like, you know, crossing my fingers with that one, right? <sighs> fucking kill me. All right, so that was a solid main event. I'll give credit where credit is due. That was a good match. That was actually a really, really fun match. I wasn't really expecting anything else less, though. It just, again... 
the whole monotony of just having a match after match after match after match after match, it just it takes a toll on you, bro. It really does take a toll on you. But I was up. I was up for the last few minutes of that match. That was actually really dope. I liked the whole finishing sequence. I mean, I kind of wish that they didn't have Kanosuke kick out of his fucking finisher. That really did irritate the fuck out of me. But, you know, Swerve is one of those rare wrestlers where he has two finishers today. I mean, back in the days, it was all the rage to have two finishers. Nowadays, it's kind of a rare thing. And, you know, he has the JML driver. I think he calls it the big pressure now. And he has the swerve stump. So, you know, I guess he can switch it up whenever he wants to. That's pretty cool at the very least. And I did like the whole little fucking... I mean, I guess it was a swerve stump. But technically, it was like the cave-in finisher that um buddy from um, NXT. Uh, what's his name again? Um, man, why do you guys let me know? What's, this, what's the guy's name again? He's like on SmackDown now. Who fucking cares? I don't care. I mean, his finisher is called the caveman. The fucking hillbilly guy. To the moon whatever the fuck his name is but uh he did that and it, did, it looked so goddamn smooth i actually did like the swerve step into the power bomb also from kanosuke again it was a fun match i liked it i just wish that that would have been the match to deliver in all the other matches they didn't go so long they didn't do fucking everything underneath the sun like every other fucking aew show and we would have had more reason to care about this match with build coming into this match that's what i wanted to see that's the theme that should have been built up into all this because i didn't even know it was number one contenders match until they said it like what maybe like the middle of the night i remember seeing him them talking about it being a number one contenders match and i'm just like when did that why when did i mean i understand swerve getting a number one contender shot but what the fuck did kanosuke do to get a number one contender shot didn't he lose his match against will osprey like theoretically shouldn't will osprey be the one getting the world title shot or am I just using way too much common sense here, right? Now, the pros and the cons to all this. Something else that I do want to note that I want to give props to. I shouldn't have to give props to this because this should just be a fucking given. But it's 20... <laughs> It's 2024 and professional wrestling feel, or let me not say professional wrestling, AEW feels the need to constantly go against the grain. And I feel like I at least have to point out the fact that not only did the world championship finally, finally have a purpose on this show because it was the main event and it did circulate around the world heavyweight championship. They did make it a point, not just to just show the world champion and the world championship, but they did make it a focal point of the main event and they did highlight the importance of it throughout the match, telling everybody that this is for all the marbles to go after the world title. Samoa Joe, this is the number one contender match. My only problem with this, again, is the fact that Kanosuke Takeshita didn't do a goddamn thing to earn this spot. And honestly, and I know they didn't want to blow their load tonight, that's obvious, but I just mean just from a sensible booking standpoint, you would think that maybe Osprey should have been the one in this match, right? Considering he beat Kanosuke. But again, you have to divert your fucking attention from the obvious and you have to put your thinking cap on and then take it back off again because you have to remind yourself to breathe and, you know, then you take it back off again and then you become a wrestling fan. Like I said, the importance highlighting the world championship, again, it should be a given, but props were a prop. I'll take whatever I can get as far as sensible booking is considered, right? The match in itself was really really fucking good i dug the main event overall but that still doesn't take away from the fact that this show was a fucking drag this show slugged on three of these matches were boring as shit that fatal Four Way match was boring as fuck i did not give a shit about any of that that tag team match with orange cassidy was boring as fuck i didn't give a shit about that and i don't give a shit about fucking Yamcha over here going up against Will Ospreay. None of the shit I cared about. I, we didn't get any legitimate promos tonight. I mean, uh, this is just... Again, it was just an exhibition show for all intents and purposes. I would have really appreciated them having some forethought to put into as far as credibility of the main event tonight to give these guys something to work with. That's what I really wanted them to focus on tonight. That's what I want them to focus on every other night. To take out of this show as far as a legitimate theme, as far as how I'm reviewing it tonight, the conclusion to get away from all this, bruh, like, for the love of God, give us a plot device, give us a reason, a fucking reason, that's all I'm asking for, even if you want to do your shitty ass matches, bruh, like, bruh, just give us a fucking reason, not just for that particular match, I can forgive all of that if the main event kicks a whole bunch of ass. If that main event is rocking, 
I'm cool with you pulling whatever nonsense you want to pull throughout the night as far as your bullshit mid-card matches and your opener. But goddamn it, splice in between maybe Kanosuke stretching his legs. Maybe Renee Patty Kate going out there and asking Sore Strickland, is he prepared for tonight, right? Maybe you can start the show off tonight with maybe something happening backstage with Samoa Joe beating up one of the poor security guards who were trying to ban him from the building because Tony Khan didn't want Samoa Joe anywhere near the building with fucking what's his name inside there with Swerve and Kanosuke. And Swerve beat the guys up and he went into a locker room and he locked himself inside it because he had to be near a TV to see what the fuck was going to go on with the match. I'm not saying that's the appropriate creator, but something along the lines of that. You hooked the viewer in like that. No one knows who Will Ospreay is and you're not going to hook them in by doing that. And if this is just you playing up to your AEW faithful, then like I said, once, twice, three, I've lost counts. I don't have that many fingers or toes. I don't have enough fingers and toes in my family to point to the fact how many times I've talked about this talking point and this perspective over and over and over and over and over again. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the fucking kitchen. Meaning if you ain't gonna go out of your way to be a legitimate promoter, meaning you're doing everything out of your way to fucking make amends with the casual audience, that being me also, because I consider myself a casual viewer, don't make any mistakes about it, all right? Just because I'm reviewing the show has nothing to do with my watchability. My watchability, how I actually entertain myself, had it not been for this fucking, what, YouTube stuff? I can tell you right now when I was suspended, I wasn't watching AEW. I didn't watch the pay-per-view. I didn't watch the show because I don't have any incentive to want to watch it. I am the casual viewer. And I would tell you right now what I want to see is reasoning. Purpose. A beginning, a middle, and the end. A climax. And you build off of that as a cliffhanger to get me to want to tune in the following week. And if you can't do that... Or better yet, what I think is more so conspicuous and what I'm I'm feeling is more so along the lines of that. If you don't want to do that, then get the fuck out of the chair. Get somebody else in that chair. Let someone else be a bucker of the year or a promoter of the year because you guys are interchangeable. And as long as you're not WWE, you're going to get that spot one way or another, even if it contradicts the other previous award. You'll be perfectly fine with your marks. They'll come. If the AEW initials... If they're still there, they'll be there. It's us who you should be worried about. And God damn it, I'm tired of being on the bat burner. I want to enjoy AEW just like the rest of your sycophants who pretend to enjoy it. They say they enjoy it, but in reality, they don't. They say it because they hate WWE. <sighs> but I guess I'm just yelling at the clouds right now, as always, right? That's fine, though. Like I said, it was a decent main event. But it ain't make up for how fucking shitty this show was. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, my name is Devontae, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces, P. Ice.